Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming back at you with another one of my Robotech RPG Tactics updates. And uh, as you know, I am uh, constantly staying, trying to stay apprised of what's going on with the RPG Tactics and the um, miniature game and when it's coming out and what we're going to receive and any important news that I can receive. We're up to update 151, and you can check that Check out this information on your own at Robotech Center. I'm sorry, RobotechGameCenter.com, and uh, got some important news. I mean, it's news. I don't know if it's important news, but first thing I want to say is before we get into all this, I just saw a couple of videos um, online on YouTube. Actually, I've watched them. It was kind of, kind of disappointing to me you know that the this individual would say the comments that he made about uh palladium and about uh, robotech tactics the creators of robotech tactics and uh rpg tactics you know i don't know it just it just felt like uh this guy doesn't really understand or he has his his motivations were uh selfish motivations and not uh for the robotech community but i can see his point of view which is what makes it scary. I understand his point of view and understand where people are coming from, but that doesn't make me agree with it and it doesn't make me feel like they're right because I definitely think they're wrong. And uh, But we all have our own personal opinions, right? Okay, so let's go into tell you about what the update is and then I'll stay, I'll stay with what I know for sure here and then we can talk about that at the end or what have you. This is Wayne's post. Wayne posted that he's basically just saying thank you because they have 78% uh, voted yes. Okay, well, uh, that percentage is skewed, right, I think, because hypothetically, let's say that everybody that voted, voted 50-50 yes and no but only half the people voted that means you would have got a 25 percent no 25 percent yes and then the rest of the 50 percent would have not voted okay well anyone that not votes is automatically considered a yes vote <laughs> so i don't know exactly how many votes well i don't know how many votes we got uh actual physical votes all i know is that anybody that didn't vote is considered to be a voted yes so if only 22 percent where was that uh yeah 22 percent if only 22 percent of the backers voted no and no one else voted they would have got 78 percent yes i know i personally voted yes and that was my big beef with the comment I had made at the beginning. This other person, he also voted yes, but he said it was a, a reluctant yes, or uh, the reason why he voted yes was because he thinks it doesn't really matter what he votes because there's going to be so many people that don't get a chance to vote that it's going to allow them to take their product to Gen Con and sell it. Okay, now having read a little bit further down on this, it they, they clarify it, so we're going to go on. Okay. Uh, so that basically they appreciate us voting yes, which, which is cool because, um, and I appreciate them saying thank you because uh, they didn't, we didn't have to say yes. And they didn't, you know, they felt like they didn't have to take it to Gen Con because some people in the community, very small percentage, 22% maybe, feel that um, they should be the first ones to get the Kickstarter packages the first ones to get the robotech tactics in their hands and no one else like i paid good money for this and i expect to get it that's that's the attitude right going on it's i'm gonna i keep going back to that and i'm sorry it's a it's a heated subject in my limited sphere of influence okay but here it's taken them a while to get everything put back together, sorting out the back-end kits, making sure that every item is properly set up in preparation, exporting, meeting with representatives to UPS, USPS, Pitney Bowes, getting their shipping system updated and expanded. Basically, they've got to take their warehouse that they've only shipped like one or two boxes every day, you know, big boxes, you know, or maybe one couple hundred boxes. They're going to be doing that a little bit differently this time. They, they, they need to be able to mass 
produce, not in mass produce, but mass uh, mail all the equipment, and they're going to have to get like big trucks to come do shipments and stuff, pickups and stuff like that. So, so they had to communicate with them, letting them know, hey, I'm getting ready to have this large shipment. I'm going to need you guys to be prepared to pick it up and ship it out for us. Okay, so and they had to buy boxes, tons of boxes for shipping out all the goodies. Okay, well, there's only a limited number of sizes of boxes, and and when they when they got there, and a lot of people will get boxes that are too big, and they'll include packing supplies or whatever. You don't want the boxes to be exactly the same size as the product you're sending out because then, if in effect, there's no protection for the products inside. So you want to make sure that there's packing supplies, and they had to get that, right? There's a variety of different shipments to export into the backers' kits. Basically, um, there's 2,456 different combinations. Okay, so basically what they're saying is a lot of us out there, you and I, backers, we didn't order just one simple thing like first contact and that was it. I mean, a lot of people did. Don't get me wrong. About half of us ordered just that. But then there's others that ordered first contact plus some additional add-ons and a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And so what happened is you've got 2,456 different orders and so they they don't. They're not going to need 2,456 different box sizes. Don't get. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Okay. So basically, they ordered ten thousand dollars worth of boxes. If there's only about five thousand boxes going out, are they saying they paid two dollars per box? It's possible. Could be. Okay. Seems high. Okay. Um. Especially when you're buying in bulk like that, you would expect to get some kind of discount. Saturday, 10 p.m. night. Right, they uh, yesterday last night they got online, posted this so that we'd know. And pl- now they've got an important message from Kevin. Now, now I'm going to butcher this name because um, I've always called it Zmbedia, but be- but I could be butchering that. Okay, I know he's the uh, he's the C- C- Palladium's you know CEO. Basically, he he created like Rifts and Palladium, the fantasy role-playing game, and a number of other games. Now, and all the expansions, you know, like Heroes Unlimited, and shoot, I can't, I'm not even going to try to start listing all the games that he's made. I really enjoyed his Palladium fantasy role-playing game because I think uh, one of the things I did, the main reason why I liked that version of of uh, a fantasy role-playing game was, I think he touched on alignments. Uh, in a very intellectual way. I mean, the, uh, the unlike you know, like in D and D, you got chaotic and lawful neutral and all that junk, right? Well, in the Palladium fantasy game, he has alignments like diabolical and mischievous and things like that, which are kind of like motivational backgrounds, uh, but they also are alignments, like how you're aligned. And he has a long list of he basically gives you a guideline of how to play each of these alignments and what kind of people would have those kind of alignments and it was just it, it was basically just a huge eye opener i like to use that alignment system with any of my fantasy role playing games uh, even non D&D or non palladium fantasy role playing games cuz i play i don't know too many games to count okay but I've, I've always called him Kevin Zambedia, but uh, that's probably not how you pronounce it. Zambeda. Maybe it's Zambeda? I don't know. I should probably put that in some kind of translating software and see what comes out. Basically, Kevin's saying, thank you for voting us in, right? He's saying an overwhelming majority, 78% of who actually voted. Okay? So what he's saying is, We've had a three to one yes vote of the people that actually voted. And and that tells that's that's a good sign if that's truly the case. So out of those uh fifty percent of people that voted, I'm just saying, I'm just pulling a number out of my butt. But fifty percent of the people that voted, seventy eight percent of those actually said yes. So that leaves you with 22% of people that didn't vote or voted no in that small group, which is really only, what, 11, 11% of the entire community? I mean, if those numbers hold up. So to me, about a 10% no vote, eh, that's going to be expected because there's dicks out there and there's people that are just jerks and, 
assholes basically out there and uh but everybody else is a lot more understanding they're a lot more excited about the game what's happening they also understand that taking the product to gen con is a major benefit for us as gamers not just them as a company of course it's going to be a benefit for them because they're going to sell the product but guess what anytime they sell that product that's another person i get to play so that increases the popularity of the game if this game continues to be very popular they're going to make a second or i've already heard them talk about an advanced product i've even ta heard them talking about different series you know the sentinel southern cross you know invid invasion all that stuff is possible if we make this game successful don't just get your greedy little pants in a wad and say no please don't take it to gen con please send it to me first oh boy that's grind my gears okay so here we go he's been showing one one of the boxes around and uh they basically they'll have they have a complete box in there uh everybody's going wild over it looks big beefy and beautiful um, a couple of the expansion packs, half a dozen sprue examples, right? Then they're they're having this other company paint their miniatures, which perfectly fine with that. Okay, blue table painting. I don't know what their quality of their work is or anything. Uh, I probably could pull it up real quick. Just looking at that guy and these guys over here, they look like they're doing a pretty good job. Okay. Um, yeah. Just looking at some of these figs here. Let's let's see if we can't zoom in. I don't know if that's good quality, but they do conversion work. They do a trade program. I'm just gonna learn more. Not that I care, but um, got videos. Okay. I want to see their. Pro I want to see examples. Surface portfolio. There we go. Featured work. Okay. Yeah, see, they're doing they're doing a good job. What about mechs? Got anything mech related? Okay, that's kind of a mech. It's Infinity, which I almost got into playing. I actually, never did any work with Infinity. Oh, okay, it brings you to the Infinity portfolio. Yeah, see, just looking at that model right there, they did pretty good. Honestly, that's about the same quality as I would do. So, yeah. So, basically what they've done is they've taken um, their demo box that they're showing around at the office and they sent it out to have it professionally painted by this group here, the Blue Table Painting, which are they're doing pretty good. And uh, they're getting them painted so that uh, when they go to these demos or what have you, they'll have these beautiful models to put on the table. And, yeah. Okay, so that's that's pretty cool. I, I think that's that's super cool. And uh, I guess they're going to get Blue Table Painting to get them done painted before they get to Gen Con, you know, so they can at least show off painted models at Gen Con, which I really hope they do. Basically, they say they're working them like dogs because they didn't get the UEDF production samples until last week, and hopefully they'll get it all painted. Well, if these guys are any good, they'll get them knocked out in just a few days. Carmen Belair is co-author of The Rules, also got to see it all, and he was impressed kev i know it has been hell to get this game made but the end product is really something you should be really proud okay so that makes me feel good because everything i've seen come out of palladium has always been i'm not going to say top notch okay i'm not going to say because they're not a big huge production company yet it seems like they are because they've been around forever and they put out hundreds of books but they've always kind of trimmed the fat and went budget um just just to kind of when i put, pull up pick up a palladium book i'm not feeling like i'm getting the same value physically as i would if i went with a mongoose hardback book or if i went with a D, &D hardback book those books all just seem to be more meatier the you know the paper and everything palladium likes to go with paperbacks and uh and that's fine. I, I I play paperback games like shoot, you know, way back when uh, D and D was just three little brown books, you know. So I don't have any problem with that. It makes me feel like Palladium's not a triple A tier game company. They are. I love them, but it just makes me feel like they're not. 
Okay, that's what I'm. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I know they. I know if this game comes out and it is the way it's, you know, just it's going to put Palladium on the map. You know, it's going to. They're going to crank out some books for this. They're going to crank out some campaign books. You know, and it's going to be just. It, hopefully, it takes off like wildfire. And the first step of that is getting it to Gen Con. Hot topic. This is the hot news right here. This is the boom. There's a new Robotech RPG Tactics game piece, which may be made available via Robotech Academy Kickstarter. If you don't know what the Robotech Academy Kickstarter is, um, Harmony Gold is um, trying to kickstart another cartoon series in the Robotech universe. Okay, And if that happens, or as part of it, there's going to be a uh, Robotech more more models for the Robotech miniatures game, which is always cool. Now, you know the game's in 285th scale or 6mm. And, yeah, they have their blessings to go along with that and make those, okay, from Harmony Gold. Okay, Harmony Gold may, may announce a Comic-Con International in San Diego this weekend. Uh, if they're going to add any new pieces or not, that'll be cool. Harmony Gold's proposed new venture to expand the Robotech universe and they're using Kickstarter to pilot the hopes. Okay, so that's that's cool. So I wasn't even aware that Robotech Academy was a was a Kickstarter. Um, I might go in there and just back that. You know, give them five bucks or ten bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever it is, uh, because I love Robotech and I think uh, you know there's so many there's so many animated series out there that I can't get my hands on and when i do it's in japanese and it's no subtitles and then i'm all frustrated and macross saga the very first one i've got the complete series on dvd that's that's always been my favorite the other ones have all been kind of just second fiddle to that first robotech experience that i ever had when i was a kid and that was it that's really all i wanted to tell you guys about i wanted to tell you about yes they got 78 percent votes and they're they're taking the product and they're getting some stuff painted up by blue table painting and i wanted to find out a little bit about them and also that there might be new pieces coming up and remember you guys can all go check this out at robotechgamecenter.com all right thanks for coming out and checking out this new update 151 and you all have a great rest of your night